What's up, boys? Yeah, pretty drunk last night. <laughs> <laughs> they could be the next Rolling Stone cover. Rolling Stone magazine, what's that all about? Uh, we want to know if we won this thing or not. You got autographed my guitar with a date on it? Do you want it? The first time that we ever played together was like, right here. Right, right, right. The whole house really vibrates when you're down here. It's very loud. We're here with the Sheepdogs, and we're at their old high school. It's amazing how much this is still the same. Trip down memory lane. This is what we're playing. It's the second sell they've ever had, which is us, so it's pretty incredible. A lot of guys was in a great spot in their hometown. This is where it all happens now. We've probably played in Saskatoon at least, like, I don't know, over 50 times. I'm not even sure. It might be like 75. 40 times? 50 times? <laughs> More than any other city, for sure. Like, Saskatoon is kind of a different animal, being the hometown, and usually having to run around a whole bunch, going and seeing friends and family. It's sort of all the expectations surrounding that show in particular kind of made it unique. When we go into another city, we're usually a little bit more chill. That one was a pretty busy day as far as uh, us tourist jobs go. It's so great you come for the show too, because this is gonna be like our biggest hometown show ever. I mean, the last show we played was like 300 people, so to play 3,000 is like a bit of a trick down tape. Yes, <laughs> that's the right. That's right. The first bit. <laughs> it's tricky because a lot of our friends didn't get tickets because they're all just didn't assume they wouldn't sell out or something. damn hard to get a good breakfast in Saskatoon. Major cities have tons of places, but uh, you know, that's why we like the Park Cafe, because it, it gives you some, uh, some damn good, simple breakfast food. It's kind of a hangout for musicians, too. Oh, and if you come here, you know, on like a Sunday after a show, you might see you, know, you saw the night before, and you're like, hey, you know, we got pretty drunk last night. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you guys ever had a restaurant specifically open for you before? No, but I hope this is the first of many. <laughs> many times. I like the like diner experience so much. Well, at least we got to be the first, so that's cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm glad it was you know, a great spot in our hotel. Yeah. This is where we're playing. There's the best room there. Right there. The old picture of Saskatoon. See what all the fuss is about. So tonight we got a delay. So we were uh, just at the park cafe, which is on the west side. They cross over the river to the east side, where my parents live, in the Broadway area. And uh, that's where we've been practicing the whole time we've been a band. Uh, so about seven years, they've always let us jam in the basement. when they first started and they really, really, all they needed was a place. Young musicians have no money. They have a lot of 
enthusiasm. So we said, you know, the basement is fine. We checked with the neighbors on both sides. Because the whole house really vibrates when they're down there. It's very loud. We've had lots of rehearsals here over the years because I play as well. Sean's right? a so musician, yeah. They, they kind of grew up, or Sam kind of grew up with music in the house too, so it's just a natural step. I know that, uh, you know, Sam's dad obviously was really excited to know that Sam was interested in playing music. His parents are also very cool about uh, letting us jam and putting up with noise. It's like the first time we ever played together was like right here. Right here. So we said, okay, that's too loud. It's too loud. I said to Margie, like, did you see this coming? She goes, no. Like, this is when they started playing, like, every night. And basically learning, you know, learning to play. Like, Sam had not played drums until... They were learning their instrument. Practice, yeah. They play in All the basement. The yeah. That's, That's where, where they, they rehearse. We have to stop at 10.30. Because, like, the, the windows rattle. And not just ours, the neighbors' windows rattle. I love watching the crowd reaction when these guys play live because they really get the crowd going. That makes me very proud. This is where it all started. That's where they rehearse on that nice green carpet. I mean, you know that that van is just a piece of crap and they're driving across the mountains. You know, that's a little scary. Worried, worried, worried. <laughs> very much so, yes, but very excited for them. Often she's the last one to see us before we leave or sees them. We just get back because all our stuff stays at their house. Yeah. We're walking to the house that uh, served as a studio for when we recorded Learn and Burn. Let's go. <laughs> SJ. And this is his place and basically he was away with his band for the summer he let us, uh, I think Ryan was renting it out. We go way back, we all sort of met separately and then we played a battle of the bands together once and uh, kicked their asses. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest thing about recording in a place like this is that basically it was Ryan's place for the summer, uh, there's no time restrictions, I could come in in the day, work all day when these guys were done after work they'd come in and do stuff. You probably actually see my work out this window here. That's the one reason why I like the job, and then the second reason is because, yeah, they let me leave on tour basically whenever I need to. Construction, shoe salesman, work, works with people with disabilities. I would say for the most part, like, all of my bosses is kind of just really like their band, so it's never been a problem. We're more than full-time into the into just the music now. There's no more part-time jobs for us. Which is one of the greatest things that's probably ever happened to me, is being able to focus only on music and not have to worry about uh, you know paying the bills or whatever with a, a second job. Thanks, SJ. Yeah, thanks, buddy. I'll see you down there. See you guys. I got autographed my guitar with a date on it. You want it? Yeah, for sure. I own this house. I have a studio on the ground floor. Yeah, I've done demos for uh, since 1992. Dell is the man that owns the house that we recorded Learn and Burn in. He's obviously uh, has been very excited about the fact that it was his house that, that kind of all started with us recording that album. Hey, I guess you think I'm a singer. I guess you think I'm some kind of a hog. Hey, but the real show is these guys here, yeah. These guys are walking down the street. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Coming up on Much Detour. There's got to be a morning after. We're going to meet up with an old friend, Mitch Lysak. I'm here with the Sheepdogs, and we're at their old high school. I'm actually in this shot. I was like, thief number four. Thief four. <laughs> then we're heading to Soundcheck at the Besborough. It's only sold out ever once before. That was last summer, and so it's the second sell they've ever had, which is awesome. So it's pretty incredible. <laughs> Why don't you pull in here and then we'll I go, think there's we'll some, yeah, I think you drive, but when I was last year. I'm pulling on. Just pull, in pull here. here. We'll pull on in here. I'm gonna right. pull this here. I'm gonna pull my yeah, thumb. down here. <laughs> I'm gonna pull pork sandwich. <laughs> that work? This venue called the Bez Gardens, it's only sold out ever once before. That was last summer and that was The Roots. And we were all there watching the show. So this is the second sell, I think, that they've ever had. Us, so it's pretty incredible. It's a great honor to be the only the, the second act to sell out the, uh, the best gardens. And to just you know stand on that stage and look out at all those people, you know, reaffirming just the support that we have in Saskatoon, you know, meant a lot to me, especially being in our hometown. My name is Mitch Lysak, and I'm here at the Sheepdogs, and we're at their old high school where I currently teach right now. I'm an English and drama teacher. Mitch Lysak is a guy that uh, Ryan and I used to work at Blockbuster Video with, and now he is a teacher at uh, mine and Ryan's old high school. He started out just being friends at a movie store, you and I and him. And it was interesting because none of us, neither of us, had you know, were playing in bands at the time we met. We kind of started off Blockbuster Video, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Working there before the hair, before the beers, <laughs> before anything, out. before the bands getting yelled at. Yeah. Is that grand photo around? Yeah, oh, there's a bunch. We gotta go. Hey, get out my way. Hey, yes, I feel too good. Uh, here's me, Ewan. I wouldn't set out to hurt anyone deliberately unless it was, you know, important. Like a league game or something. Dick Buckus. <laughs> I was really into football, so. Uh, Ryan's, the only difference between me and a madman is I am not mad. Salvador down. <laughs> oh, it's your musical pictures? Let's check it out, absolutely. Oh my god, that'd probably be super funny. It's kind of the arts theater at Hardy here, so it's where we do all the kind of art showcases and guitar classes, drama shows, and musicals. I'm actually in this shot. That's me. With your head cut off? Yeah, you can't see my head, but I, I was in this scene. This is Oliver. That might be me right there. I was like, Thief number four. Thief four. <laughs> there you go, Santa Music. There he is, one of the Von Traps himself. Ryan and I first met in grade seven. We were in what's called Zone Band, where they got all the kids in different elementary schools. Forced them all into one big room, where which is really yeah. one band teacher's like pulling his hair out, trying to get everyone to pay attention. We were in two different rows, and we both played clarinet. We both played the, the babe magnet instrument. Of <laughs> I mean, it was obviously a, a long process between you know being in grade seven, playing the clarinet, and then being in a band together and, and everything that we've gone through since then, but yeah, it's pretty cool. It's uh, the first place we actually met. We should go through to the guitar. Yeah, oh, okay. Let's go the other way around. Other okay. Around? Yeah. Cool. There's a lot for me to learn. Try to trade me all secrets. There's a lot for me to burn. Man, I should that please. Room 9 is the music room. Of course, it wouldn't have it starting off any other way. This is what you can do, students. You come into this room, you can walk out a sheepdog. I remember this stain. <laughs> they told you you had to play. <laughs> It took a long time for you to stop playing like that. Yeah, it would be like gigs, I'd be like, put my chair down and walk. <laughs> There's got to be a morning after. It's amazing how much this is still the same, like really not much no. This is the wall of fame of people of various levels of fame. It just recognizes the graduates from Hardy that have excelled in their either the arts or the academics. The Wall of Fame is something that Ryan and I often joke about. I think we were joking about it way back in the early days of the band. I'd say the chances are looking pretty good that we might get in there. Watch out, various CFL players. The slogan of Evan Hardy is excellence in all things. So 
It's actually the rock stardom included. Rock stardom included. All things. Excellent. All things. Every day I come in like I'll go get the it. excellent golf. Enjoy the time there, boys. Yeah. Trip down memory lane. Oh, no kidding, eh? When I'm in Saskatoon, I'm, I'm in this area, and I'll come out and I'll go running on this field and stuff like that. It's, I like, I love, see, I like, I like this. This is what I'm talking about. In town like Saskatoon, everything's very spread out. It's not like the big city thing where everything's jammed together. Look how much space there is just here in the middle of the city. Big sky. It's awesome. Man. I love this. I really miss this. It's awesome. I'm getting worked up over here. <laughs> It's always so weird because you know you leave a place for a long period of time, and you come back, and it looked basically the same. Yeah. Thanks yeah. a lot, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, always. Thanks, man. Come here. Thank you. Always. I'll see you soon. Good to see I'll you get a teacher. <laughs> yeah, see you later, Thanks, man. sometimes joke around and sing a, a silly song kind of as a parody of, of guys that have like you know those pre-show hugs and, and various routines. I know that Sam likes to do a little bit of stretching of a beer. We're pretty relaxed guys as it is so just chilling is kind of the best thing you can do before you go out there. I hear less than half of what I see on Much Detour. Give it up for the sheep dog! Showtime at the Bez is approaching. And it's the last day of voting for the contest for the cover. They can be the next Rolling Stone cover! We're just about out of time. I just want to say thank you very much for coming to see us, the sheep dogs, play tonight. It's your 10 o'clock tonight to vote for the Sheepdogs. Rollingstone.com backslash choose the cover. Get on your iPhones, get on your Blackberries and vote for these guys. They could be the next Rollingstone cover. Well, the competition that we were in is, uh, is one where unsigned bands competed to make the cover of Rolling Stone magazine. Saskatoon is uh, a beautiful city, but it's very isolated. It's far from media attention. Toronto and New York's and LA's and all that stuff. So when people do well, and the city really supports them, they're really proud of their own. You know, we've seen it happen to other people, and we really feel the love from this whole competition. We have like you know young music fans, but also you know people, 70 year old grandmas that were going to the library to use the internet for the first time to vote for us. It's really cool how people can get behind something like that. Yeah, now we're going to Times Square and seeing, you know, if we're going to be on the cover of Rolling Stone. It's pretty exciting. We feel pretty confident. Everyone we talk to seems to think we should win or we're going to win, but, you know, it, you can't underestimate the voting power of tweens. At that point, it was like, it was done. We just had to, just had to wait. I don't know about you boys, but I'm about ready for all this to be over with. I hope we, uh, we take home the gold. championship in high school, just had that awesome celebratory championship feeling. It's 
pretty overwhelming. It was like all these people wanted to get pictures and say hey, and my parents were there. When we found out we won, it was kind of like, ah, oh, all right, this is over. <laughs> now. Smoking, showing this picture. Oh man, my mom's gonna kill me. After we won, we, uh, we went out and had some drinks. The whole weekend was surrounded by us doing something exciting and then going for drinks. <laughs> and we went out with a bunch of people from Rolling Stone and from the, all the people we had worked with. And it was just kind of like a big celebration, like this thing's done and the cover's out. Apparently some of us made a trip that we don't remember to Harlem <laughs> that we heard about the next day. <laughs> Alright, we've done a lot of traveling lately. We don't get to spend enough time in our beloved Saskatoon. Thank you very much, people. Uh, this is a very significant show. It was the first show we played after the Rolling Stone competition began, and it, it was sort of like a homecoming of sorts. There was a lot of people at this show that uh, you know hadn't come to a Sheepdog show before. It's coming back to Saskatoon and playing a show in kind of like basically the most beautiful venue in town. It was a really cool kind of homecoming. It was an easy choice for us to pick Saskatoon as our. Uh, it's our tour stop to be featured on the show. The whole competition was ending, it was Canada Day, it was just kind of like the perfect storm for what we knew was going to be just a great show and a great, you know, moment in our lives. Thanks, everybody.